All right, everybody, I'm going to show you how to do these illusions of the diamond or star. You're going to need a ruler. It could be wooden, plastic, metal, so long as you have inches or centimeters on either side. I'm going to be using a Sharpie, but of course, um, for you, go ahead and make sure you are using a pencil. It's easier to use a pencil because you can erase it. Sharpie, you cannot. I'm using the Sharpie so that way you guys can see it. All right. So I'm going to actually do my first diamond with the inches, which is the wider measurement. And then, of course, I'll do my second one with the centimeters, which is the, the smaller measurements. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how long I want my line to be. And so I'm going to do it about five inches. Make sure when you draw your first original line that you have enough space for the other line that goes vertically. So our horizontal line is going to go across five inches. And then I'm gonna go ahead and measure the halfway mark of my five inches, which is two and a half. So now I'm gonna rotate my paper and I'm gonna draw another five inches length line that meets in the center. So at the two and a half mark, I'm going to draw a five inch line. And the reason why we're doing this is because we want the same amount of length on either side. So all four of our sides are equal. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my measurements. And I'm going to measure at half an inch. So every half inch, I'm going to line it up. Here's my half inch and then my whole inch. So you're going to, you're going to measure all the half inches and the whole inches on both sides throughout the whole entire line. So half inch, whole inch, half inch, whole inch, half inch, whole inch, etc. And so what we've done to this line, we're going to do the same thing and make the measurements on our other line as well. So same thing, we line it up. Zero, half inch, whole inch, half inch, whole inch, half inch, whole inch, half inch, whole inch, half inch, whole inch. <laughs> Okay, and so that's how you do your measurements. So now, if you think about it in math, we've got our x-axis, where we make a graph, and then we have our y-axis. And so just like in math, you're going to mark and label all of your little measurements. So we've got positive 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the x, positive 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 on the y. Then, of course, we have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5 on the x. Then the negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5 on our y. And so for this, we're actually going to tweak it a little bit. Our y, we're going to end up adjust here so that way we can use it easier and make it easier for you to understand. So the Y we're actually going to switch it. So it's going to flip 5, 4, 3, 2, and then 1. So our positive has been flipped so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to flip our, our negatives as well. So we'll have negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. And so the reason why we do this is so that way when you go to make your lines and connect your marks, your measurements, it, you're not trying to do it with weird numbers. You're connecting the 1 to the 1, the 2 to the 2, 3 to 3, 4 to 4, and then of course 5 to 5. And so of course we want straight lines, so make sure you use your ruler. You're going to line up the 1 with the 1, and remember when you make your line that you're holding your, your ruler down with enough pressure that it doesn't move and you're also connecting your measurements from where they cross over on the X and the Y. So where they meet together. So it's a point. Think of it as a coordinate. So your coordinate for X would be zero, uh, 1, 0 and your coordinate for Y would be 0, 1. And so you want to make sure that you're connecting to those actual points and not the like end of your tally. Uh, if you're making like actual like tally marks, 
you want it to be to the middle, to the center. Because what will end up happening is that X and that Y axis line will end up being part of the grid that's inside of your diamond. All right, and so that's how you do the lines for the first corner. And so what we do to this corner, we're going to do to all of the other corners. Again, connecting the 1 to the 1, the 2 to the 2, 3 to 3, 4 to the 4, 5 to the 5. And again, make sure you are holding your ruler nice and steady. You're lining up your, your points and your measurements so that way your line is straight. Everything is connecting. And here I made a little mistake. My ruler actually moved on me. So make sure again that you are you're holding that ruler nice and steady, making sure it's not moving as you, you pull your, your pencil along the edge to make your straight line. And please, 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 please use a ruler. Um, if you don't use a ruler, you'll end up getting like wavy lines and it won't look so smooth and, and pretty. So this is the measurement at half an inch. So now I'm gonna do the measurements at in centimeters. So I'm gonna actually do the half centimeters. So the first thing I want to do is draw my X and my Y axis. And I actually decided to do 10 centimeters long. So of course we start with our X. We draw our X axis at 10 centimeters, mark our halfway point, line it up, draw our Y axis, make our measurements every half inch along the Y, every half inch along the X, And then I went ahead and I labeled it as my half centimeter. So my measurements are half centimeter. Now I'm measuring or marking out all of my different measurements so that I know how many I have. I ended up having 10 on each, each arm. I'm switching the Y's, writing them backwards. Instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, they are 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So now I'm going to go ahead and connect my 1's connect my twos, connect my threes. And so this one here is a lot, their measurements are a lot closer together. So you have to really, really, really be careful and really be cautious and really take your time and make sure that you are measuring them properly and connecting them properly. That you're not, you're not skipping a measurement. You're not skipping a point that you're, you're not using the same point for, for two different measurements and you have one line for each measurement. And so here you can kind of see when you have measurements that are wider apart, it's kind of choppy along this edge, whereas when they're closer together, it's very smooth and rounded. And that's kind of that's kind of what's going to happen just depending on how many lines you have. The more lines you have, the more smooth of an edge you'll get, only because those lines are crossing so close together. The farther away the wider your measurements, the more of a gap you're going to see. You're going to see that difference between them. And again, make sure that you can see your measurements. So like here, I actually, I had connected the number three to the number four instead of the number four to the number four. So just make sure that you're paying attention, you're taking your time, and you're really focusing. Try not to you cover up your measurements with your ruler like I am right now. So that way you can see all the points. You want to make sure your points are on the right-hand side so that way you can see them. Okay, and that's how you draw them. And so for coloring, I'm going to color the first one, the half inch first, only because it's easier. I'm going to color it as a grid. So I'm going to use two colors. My first color, I'm going to color. And remember, when you color in the grid, you have to skip every color. And so I just kind of like started out in my one little section started skipping my lines, coloring them in. Don't forget those little, little itty bitty pieces that are there off on the edge too. Those are still part of your grid. So I went in carefully coloring in my sections, my little itty bitty sections as well. Coloring in, skipping one, coloring in, skipping one. And then filling in that white space, that second section with a second color. I'm using like a pink. Now again, it doesn't matter really what colors that you use, just so long as you are aware of what your color value is going to be. And so I had chosen these two, so that way I could use a color that is an analogous color to them, which is this blue. 
So I've got blue to mix green, and then pink is kind of partial to red, and so they kind of go together just a little bit. So I'm actually going to color along the edge, and as you can see, I'm coloring super, super light. You can't really even see it when I color on the white section, but just here along the edge, you're going to add some of that analogous color for your value. And all you're doing is basically giving it like a little bit of a darkness. Like I said, you don't want to color too hard that it overpowers your first color. You just want it to look like it's darker, like it's got shadow on it. And the reason why we use colors instead of black is so that way it doesn't overpower it. Black is actually a very hard color to make values with when you already have color. So that's why we use other colors to make our values. And so the second one, because they're so small together, so thin, I'm just going to use one color when I'm going to use orange. Um, I don't have wide enough colors, or thin enough colors, I should say, to get in between each one of those little grid sections, so I just did it one. Then I'm going to take my analogous color, which is red, and just like I did along the edge for the first one, I'm going to do along the edge for this second one as well. So as you can see, curved line there, I'm going to make a curved line here. And so it's kind of like you're, you're kind of like coloring along the edge, pulling that value into the center, almost at like a triangle, I guess, type shading. And here you can actually see it as the, the red kind of overpowers my orange a little too much. And so I decided I was going to add my complementary color to orange, which is blue. Just a tiny little bit here along the edge, this curved edge here. Tiny, tiny bit, and you can see it already is making it look even more three-dimensional. So again, the more colors that you're using, those the more values that you create, the more three-dimensional it's going to look. And so I kind of just went through, added a couple of blue values here, just a tiny bit. Again, coloring super, super light super light that it doesn't overpower my other colors and that's it for the coloring so hope you liked it like this video subscribe to my page and happy drawing